Our next storyteller is Jeremy Jones. Jeremy is here to share his story about how quitting made him realize where he was needed most. Let's all welcome Jeremy Jones. So I was 25 years old. I was in the Army. I was stationed in Hawaii. 9 11 had happened the year prior, and during that year after, it became very clear that my unit in Hawaii was not going to go to Afghanistan. And while nobody wants to go to war, it's an odd and kind of frustrating feeling when you see all this going on and people you know are deploying and you feel like you're not doing anything. Around the same time, I was at a crossroads because I was about halfway through my commitment, five year commitment to the Army. And I needed to make a decision about my future because it affected my next assignment. So I was doing a lot of soul searching and I came across this quote from Henry David Thoreau, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life that you've imagined. And I actually found that quote deeply unsettling because I realized that I had been living a life that other people had imagined for me. My father had said, go to West Point, study engineering, go infantry, go ranger school. I did all that stuff. And now I was left thinking, what's, what am I going to do? What's my dream? And I didn't know. So around that time, my unit gets sent to the swamps of Louisiana for a big training exercise. So we're there. The first week is just setting up. And there's this row of porta pots in the mud. And one porta pot was kind of my, like my safe space. It was my thinking spot. And I would go and I'd sit there and think about this quote. And I actually took out my Sharpie and I wrote on the wall in between pictures of anatomically incorrect genitals. <laughs> I, I wrote the quote, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you imagine. And I'm thinking about this all the time. And then the exercise starts. And I find myself in a four-wheeler probably two weeks in. I hadn't, you know, slept more than a couple hours a night. You know, I uh, hadn't bathed, just sleeping outside. And I'm going to pick up some ammunition from a, a supply point. And there's this captain there. And I've never really spoken to this guy. And he just says, hey, how's it going? And I just bare my soul to this guy. I just say, well, I'm trying to find the direction of my dreams, basically. And he basically replies, isn't this the life you've imagined? And I look around at the crates of ammo in the mud, and I'm like, not really. So we have this kind of long, uh, oddly meaningful conversation. I say oddly for two, uh, you know, two guys in the infantry standing in the woods. Uh, only just a few minutes, but just a really impactful conversation. And I leave. I go back to the exercise. We finish the exercise. I go back to Hawaii. And a couple weeks later, this captain calls me. He says, hey, I was thinking about you because of that conversation, and this position came up. I wanted to see if you were interested. Uh, he explained that there was a general. Uh, he was a commander of a task force, a special operations task force in the Philippines that was tracking down a terrorist group that called the Abu Sayyaf group that had uh, captured two Americans. I said, okay. Sign me up. You know, I'd, sounds good. Uh, it was in the position was to be the general's aide. So, I go to this interview. The general's in a place called Zamboanga. The interview's over the phone, and he's asking me questions, and it's going well. And then he says, "So, what's your plan? Are you planning on trying to go special forces? Are you going to stay in the infantry?" And I said, "I don't know." He said, "Well, what if you had to choose today?" And I said, "Well, if I had to choose today, I'd get out of the army." That kind of ended the interview. <laughs> and I left thinking, wow, that could have been pretty cool, but whatever. <laughs> but I get a phone call a couple weeks later. It says I got the position. And very quickly, I found myself in Zamboanga, uh, Zamboanga City in the Philippines. And when I met the general, he, he's this, this, the way I describe him, he's like Santa Claus, if Santa Claus was in the military. You know, like Santa with a military haircut, super fit, but, you know, the same kind of warm, just joyous laugh. He deeply cared about people. I mean, unlike Santa, I believed in him. That's, 
that's the thing. So, you know, he, we had the SEAL teams and the uh, special forces uh, teams out there training with the Filipinos, but he also believed very deeply in winning the hearts and minds of the people. And so he had brought engineers in, they were building roads, they were building clean water sources. He was trying to connect people with the local governments uh, so that uh, to try to fix the root of the problem. But the thing that I saw down there that impacted me the most is every night in our operations center, uh, these team of doctors would come, come in and, and they would explain what they were doing there. And they would go out into these uh, remote villages in the jungle and they would treat uh, these Filipinos with, uh, for bas basic conditions that here we take for granted, but people die from when they don't have access to care, like simple bacterial infections. And it really struck me after I spent some time there that the doctors there seemed to be having the most impact. So eventually the general pulls me aside and he explains to me that the reason I was hired is that when he was a junior officer, he was having a hard time finding his direction. And he wanted to give somebody the experience to help them find their path. And ultimately, that's what happened. That experience there led me to um, get out of the Army and apply to medical school and become a doctor. And so that's, that's what happened. Um, looking back, I would say, to kind of summarize, you know, you don't have to know what your dream is to start going in that direction. Once you commit to taking charge of your life, you you start opportunities start to open up and you start to realize things are possible that seemed unimaginable before. Anyway, thank you so much. My name is Jeremy Jones. Thanks again.